Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before starting the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and give this V. Connie holds Melinda and Gaby hostage. Today on Days of Our Lives, Jada finds evidence that Connie held Melinda hostage, Stefan tries to convince Ava to come back to work at the bistro, and Ray fears Gaby is in danger. Please note that if you purchase something by clicking on a link within this story, we may receive a small commission of the sale. At the station, EJ warns Paulina that if she fires him, she'll look foolish when this case goes to court, and no one is as good as he is. Paulina says she'll replace him with the brilliant Melinda Trask, but EJ says she's long gone, probably having had her fill of Salem politics. Paulina tells him he stole a baby, and EJ responds, allegedly. He reminds her they are in-laws and don't need a family scandal. Paulina warns him if his brother comes forward with what he knows, even she can't save him. Jada and another officer arrive at Connie's apartment with questions. They find the door ajar and blood on the floor. Jada follows the trail into the bedroom and is stunned to discover the cardboard lie tucked in the bed. Both Jada and the other officer say, What the hell? Jada sees the ropes on the bed frame and realizes Connie was holding someone hostage. They search for clues, and Jada finds Melinda's purse. Jada and the officer wonder if Melinda was here, then where is she now? Jada quickly puts out APBs on Connie and Melinda. She needs to find out what Connie did to Melinda. Roman visits Rafe in the hospital. Rafe is trying to get a hold of Gabby, but she's not answering her phone. Rafe explains he and Jada think Gabby's new assistant is dangerous and is who stabbed him. Roman thought it was Everett who stabbed him, but Rafe says his suicide may not have been one after all. Rafe tries to get out of bed to find Gabby, but Roman stops him and says it's unsafe for him to leave. He says he'll check on Gabby and make sure she's safe from Connie. At the Dimera mansion, Connie, brandishing a knife, confesses to Gabby that she's the one who stabbed her brother. Gabby says it can't be, as Everett attacked Raph. Connie says it was Bobby, as she knew him, who asked her to take out Rafe so he could be with Jada. Gabby tries to get to her phone in her pocket as she keeps Connie talking. She assumes Connie killed Bobby, and she admits she did as he was going to rat her out. Gabby asks what she did, and she admits she killed Lai. Gabby learns Connie framed her by sending her a text from Lai's cell phone that night. Connie tells Gabby she was stupid to fall into her trap then, and even more stupid for falling into this one. Gabby is confused and asks why she frame her. Connie sees that she hated how she and Stefan treated Lai and toyed with his emotions. She says she loved Lai, and they had a magical blind date. She cries they would have been together forever if Gabby hadn't tricked and humiliated him for his Dimera shares, and he could never love again after her. She tried to convince him that only she could give him the love he needed, but Gabby ruined him. Connie screams, it should have been you, Gabby. You are the one who deserved to die. Connie raises her knife and goes to stab Gabby, but Gabby dodges her. Connie goes down, and Gabby grabs her knife and runs, but Connie pursues her. Can celebrity endorsements influence election results? Later, Roman begins knocking on the door and calling Gabby's name, but nobody answers. He walks in and calls out to Gabby, but gets no answer. Roman looks around but misses seeing a bloody fireplace poker behind a door. Connie drags Gabby down to the secret room where Trask is bound and gagged in a chair. She says, Good morning, sunshine. I brought you some company. Connie ties Gabby up next to Melinda and ungags Trask when she tries to speak. Melinda asks where they are, and Connie reveals they are in the Dimera secret room. She stashed her here while she tried to kill Gabby, but she's still alive, so she decided to kill them both together. Melinda asks why she didn't kill her at her apartment, but Connie says she'd never sully her and Lai's love nest with violence. She says she and Lai will be together as soon as she kills her and Gabby. Melinda tells Connie that she can still change her mind, and she doesn't want to murder again, does she? Remember, Lai didn't want her to kill again. Connie thanks her for her concern, but with them together, she can kill two bitches with one stone, and there will be no mess to clean up. Melinda says the police are bound to look down here, but Connie reveals they'll find nothing as the two of them, 
and everything in this house are about to be incinerated. A look of terror washes over Melinda's face. Back at the hospital, Rafe tries to call Gabby again, but she's not answering. Jada arrives and tells Rafe she hasn't found Connie, but it appears Connie may have had something to do with Lee's murder. She tells him about the cardboard cutout of lie that was in her bed. She also says it appears she was also holding someone hostage. She believes it was Melinda, and there was blood at the scene. Roman returns and tells Rafe there is no sign of Gabby at the mansion. Jada makes calls and learns Gabby didn't go into the office today. Rafe hopes Gabby just took the morning off to be with Stefan. Jada doubts that and says while he was sleeping, Stefan and Gabby split up because Stefan cheated on her with Ava Polina arrives at Connie's apartment and speaks with the officer about Connie possibly holding Melinda hostage. The officer says they haven't found Connie or Melinda, and they are trying to confirm the blood the discovered is Melinda's. Polina is also shown the cardboard lie in Connie's bed, and the officer tells Polina that it's clear Connie is out of her mind. At the Brady pub, Ava tells Stefan she isn't going to work for him at the bistro, and she knows he and Gabby will get back together eventually. Stefan promises her that Gabby can rot as far as he's concerned. Ava believes he would be tempted to take her back if Gabby approaches him and apologizes. Suddenly, Gabby calls Stefan, but he ignores the call and says, She's probably just calling to tell me she and E.J. have had mind-blowing sex again. He again asks her to come to the bistro with him, as she can't be happy slinging hash here. He points out how much more money she'll make as the manager of the bistro. Ava asks another waitress to take over her tables, and she leaves with Stefan. Ava and Stefan share drinks at the bistro, but she isn't sure returning here is a good idea. She thinks Gabby won't like this, but Stefan again insists that Gabby is as good as dead to him. Ava says he may believe Gabby is out of his life, but she's been through this with Rafe and with Harris, so she is preparing herself for when he and Gabby get back together, and she's out on her ass again. Stefan swears that won't happen, as Gabby was again in E.G.'s bed just this morning. E.G. walks in and says, Isn't this cozy? I guess you've invited Ava to your victory celebration, but it's a bit premature. E.G. assumes Stefan thought he'd be in jail by now after telling the mayor all about the ordeal with Nicole's baby. He tells his brother that if this is his attempt to get revenge for what happened with Gabby, he should recall that it was Gabby who came on to him. Stefan asks about what happened this morning. E.G. states there was no this morning. Stefan says Gabby said otherwise when she sauntered downstairs in his robe. E.J. quickly realizes Gabby lied to Stefan about what happened between them that morning. Next on Days of Our Lives, Gabby and Melita are targeted and Steve has questions for Clyde.